New York is a city of trains. While it has the subway that travels just within Manhattan and parts of the outer boroughs, it also has rails that go beyond it. In an ideal world, it would be a breeze navigating all these trains. But in real life, you run into some globbity gloop all the time. So that is why this channel has made a video guide for the path, the LIRR, and now, in this video, we are going to cover the Metro North. We're going to talk about the different lines, tickets, schedule, and everything else that you might need to know when traveling the Metro North. Welcome to Urban Caffeine. You know the drill. The Metro North Railroad is a commuter rail. Its lines terminate in Midtown Manhattan in New York City and reaches out to Connecticut, upstate New York, and New Jersey. It basically complements the Long Island Railroad, or LIRR, or LIRR, or however you want to pronounce it. While the LIRR goes east of New York City, the Metro North goes north. In fact, the LIRR and this portion of the Metro North use the same app for looking up schedules and buying tickets. But we'll cover schedules and tickets later in this video. Two terminals to know are Grand Central Terminal and Penn Station because the Metro North is actually made up of two sections. The lines to the east side of the Hudson River terminate at Grand Central in Manhattan and is operated by New York. The lines to the west of the Hudson River are operated by New Jersey and you can access these lines through Penn Station. Note that these two terminals are not connected and there is no direct subway train that will take you in between these two. A subway will require at least one transfer. Since these two sections have different operators, you will find information on the East Line via the New York MTA app and website. For the West Lines, you will have to refer to the NJ Transit app and website. For the lines east of the Hudson River, most trains coming from Grand Central will stop at Harlem first to pick up passengers before heading north. At the same time, most trains incoming to Manhattan will stop by Harlem first to drop off passengers before heading into Grand Central. And this will make sense later when we talk about express trains. For trains coming out of Penn Station, it may seem weird that this portion of the map is all grayed out since these lines are administered by New Jersey. So we dug up the New Jersey rail system map to get a clearer picture of these lines. These trains of the Metro North are these trains of the New Jersey rail system. These trains that go north actually originate from Hoboken. You can catch an NJ Transit train from Penn Station that will take you to Secaucus. From Secaucus, you can catch one of these northbound trains. Trains traveling longer distances tend to skip stations to make the journey faster. For example, let's say you are at Grand Central, looking at the departure boards. Since these three lines are represented by these three colors, you'll also see three colors on the departure boards at Grand Central. Let's look at the departures on the Harlem line. When I first saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is all globbity gloop. It turns out that not all trains coming from Grand Central make it all the way to the end of the line, which is Wasik. Destination on the board will indicate the last stop of that train. But just because a train may be heading somewhere, say to southeast, doesn't mean that it will stop along all the stations on the way. According to this board, this train going to southeast will make its first stop at White Plains, effectively skipping all these stations. So it's important to read the remarks column. However, note that while White Plains is indicated as the first stop, I mentioned earlier that most trains will stop at Harlem first to pick up passengers before heading out of Manhattan. So don't be confused when a train stops at Harlem before heading to its first official stop. You can even see this in the app. And speaking of the app, aside from the website and departure boards, you can easily look up departure times on the MTA Train Time app as well as peak and off-peak pricing. Which brings us to the next chapter. Unlike the subway which has a flat rate, both the LIRR and Metro North charge fares by zones. For the trains east of the Harlem River, these are the zones for the Metro North. Yes, it looks like globbity gloop. This is because of how the trains were combined over time. But for the sake of pricing, zone pricing looks more like this. By the way, all Patreon members of Urban Caffeine will get a copy of this map. If you want to be a member, check out patreon.com slash urbancaffeine. 
Traveling within the same zone will be cheaper than traveling from one zone to another, and it gets more expensive the more zones you travel. You can buy a digital ticket from the MTA Train Time app or a paper ticket from a machine. Ticket machines at Grand Central are located here. At small stations, if they are not on the platform, they are probably below the platform. In the app, you can look up departures by inputting your origin and destination. You can also check different prices available for that particular departure. You can purchase a ticket from here or go to the ticket tab to buy from here. In this example, we're coming from Grand Central to the Botanical Garden and you're presented with all the one-way ticket options. You can also get round-trip tickets, or if you're a frequent rider, you can buy tickets in bulk. But let's take a look at all the different ticket options. City Ticket is a special ticket that could only be used when traveling within New York City regardless of zone during off-peak hours. And we'll cover peak and off-peak hours here soon. A good example would be the Botanical Garden from Grand Central. One is in Zone 2 and the other is in Zone 1. But because the Botanical Garden, which is in the Bronx, and Grand Central are both within the New York City limits, you can use the city ticket for this journey during off-peak times. One very important thing to note here is that once you buy a city ticket, you have to use it the day of purchase. So don't think that you can buy it days ahead. For these other ticket options, you have 60 days to use these tickets after purchasing. So these other tickets can be bought ahead of time. Now on to peak and off-peak tickets. Peak time is when the train you are on is scheduled to arrive at Grand Central between these times or departing at these times. All other times are off-peak hours. If you're a senior, on Medicare, or have disability, you can show the conductor an ID with your age, your Medicare card, or your reduced fare metro card if you have one. Family tickets are for children that are 5 to 11 years old. Say you're an adult with 5 children, the fifth child will have to have a child ticket, which is one of these. And military is for active duty military. Simply show your ID to the conductor with your ticket. Any ticket that you buy within the app will be under the ticket tab. Make sure you activate it when you're about to ride the train. But just when you thought we covered it all, if you happen to be going to the Yankee Stadium during a game, you will need a Yankees gate pass on top of your regular ticket. This is to show the person at the station. According to the crevices of the internet, it's to prevent gating, which is the act of people trying to get a free ride by taking advantage of large crowds riding public transit. So that's tickets via the mobile app. With the ticket machine, the instructions are pretty straightforward. Here, I'm purchasing a round trip from Grand Central. I'm going to the Botanical Garden, so I hit B. I choose Botanical Garden from the list. Since it's a Saturday, I'm going to get city tickets. And I just need it for myself. All I need are the Metro North tickets. I don't need to add a Metro card to my purchase. I'm paying with a credit card. And at this point, I'm told to finish my purchase at the card terminal. Then my tickets are printed. So those are your tickets. If there are any other special tickets like this Yankee Gate Pass, comment down below. I'm sure the community would find it helpful. Grand Central will obviously be a large station with many tracks compared to a smaller station with only two tracks. So when at Grand Central, it's important to look at the departure boards to see what track your train is departing from. If you don't see a track number for your train, don't panic. A track number usually shows up 10 to 15 minutes before departure time. Once you have your ticket and you know which track you're getting on, simply get on the train. There are no seat assignments, so you're free to sit anywhere. The conductor will come around and check tickets. Once you hand over your ticket to the conductor, they will place a card right where you are seated. This card signifies that you have paid and are accounted for. If you want to change seats, make sure you take this card with you and place it on your new seat. Something to note on the seats is that some seats are oriented in the opposite direction that the train is going. If you are prone to motion sickness, you might want to avoid these seats. And lastly, yes, the trains have restrooms. If there's anything else that's been left out, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, I hope you found this video useful. With that, I'd like to thank all patrons of Urban Caffeine. Thank you for helping out this channel and being part of its growth. It truly means a lot. If you're interested in exclusive content made specially for Patreon members, check out patreon.com slash urbancaffeine. 
Until next time, thank you so much for watching and happy New Yorking!